Hi everyone, welcome to module eight. First, please forgive me for last week not making a video. I know not everyone watches these, but I know for those of you that do, um, you know, I feel, I feel really bad about that. So please forgive me. I am back fully functional this week though. Um, I really was at towards the end of last week. So um, anyway, let's get right to it. I'm not gonna talk too much about this actual module because this is mostly about you and your own personal growth throughout the course. As we discuss sociological paths to mindful social change, there's not as much reading this week. Um, and this is really just kind of like a conclusive, I mean, all you have is the discussion, right? And sort of a conclusive discussion on how you're gonna take, what has impacted you the most from this course and how you're gonna take that moving forward. And I wanted to share with you a little about what I have taken from this. Um, because I read the book right before you guys did. Um, and after the first chapter, I knew that I was just in love with it. I found it almost therapeutic in a way. Um, but a few things that I really took from the text in particular. One is that fighting for social change, if that is your passion in life, is not going to bring you personal happiness. Um, I found that really, and I'm just, I'm being completely vulnerable with you all. Um, I found that really something to ponder on because there have been so many times in my life through either when I'm teaching and I see that light bulb go off in a student's mind where they had some kind of bias and now they don't because of something they've learned that's sociological, that has brought me happiness. But I think what the author is getting at is that it's, a, it's just a constant think, right? When you fix one thing, there's gonna be something else. And you all talked about that um, in the week that we talked about empathy and utopias, that there's always going to be something when there's humans. Um, so I think that that was enlightening to me that there is no real end state where now we've done all the work. There's always gonna be work, right? Um, and we have to just kind of be up for that challenge. Um, one of the other things that I really enjoyed in, uh, in the text was talking about how sociology is a heightened form of awareness. And I think that ties into happiness a little bit because I've always, I've told my students and friends, family this, like once you see the injustices, because there are so many people who really do not see them. Once you see them, you kind of see them everywhere. And I feel like for you all being at the level you are in school, you're probably the same. Um, it is a heightened form of awareness. You see things literally through a different lens. You see a TV show and you know, someone makes a joke and you might be like, oh, that was a little sexist or whatever. You know, you, you can't unknow those things. Um, one of the things that I do to, to cope with that, instead of just seeing, you know, the, the textbook, the author talks about how his students have said, that sociology is so depressing. And I, I don't feel that way at all. I find it empowering. Um, but one of the ways that I have tried to cope with that is um, being sure that I take plenty of downtime to do non-sociological things for myself. Um, and what I mean is to kind of shut off that part of my brain that is hyper aware of things that are wrong or things that need to be fixed. So, you know, I will with intent sit down to watch a reality show or read a fiction book about a summer romance on the beach or something that's ridiculous and, you know, completely unrealistic um, to sort of zone out. Um, it, cause I, and I'm, I'm saying all of this because I've, I've seen in really in all of your you guys work the passion that you have for your particular subject or your particular interest and 
um, it can become consuming. And the, the author of the book talks about that, you know, about all of this, about balance. And I think the thing that we take, it, what I take from this, being sociologically mindful, it's really about compassion and kindness, isn't it? That's what it's about. It's about listening to others, having empathy for others, wanting things to be better, but realizing there's always gonna be work to do, and also realizing that the change has to come from within ourselves first. Um, sort of like the Gandhi quote that he, he didn't actually say these exact words, but similar to, you know, be the change you want to see in the world or something along those lines, you know, be the change. And that's kind of what this last chapter is about. So I don't know if any of that made any sense. I hope it did. Um, so for this discussion, I am excited to hear about what text, what chapter was most impactful to you all um, and how you think you're gonna use what you've learned here in your future professional or personal lives. For those of you that are doing something in your careers that are, you know, it's hard, like, to say it's something sociological is kind of funny because really it's like everything related to people is sociology, isn't it? Um, but you know, kind of one of the more um, normal career paths in sociology, I'm interested to hear if any of you are doing that or if there's something that's sort of outside the box, but still, you see how sociology plays a role in that. So that was my little rant. Okay, um, soapbox, if you will. I'm looking at the screen behind you because I want to talk quickly about your final project. As you know, you have four options. Your uh, podcast option, a short documentary option, advocacy poster, or the written paper. So far, the submissions that already turned in are advocacy posters, and they're really, I mean, I really enjoy looking at those and, and pulling out the content from art, you know? The reason that I gave these different options is because I wanna be sure that you guys have a chance to display whatever your particular talents are, and while these four things are not every talent that you could possibly have in the world, you know, I didn't put in there a performance dance about social justice that we could have. Um, you know, I want you to be able to display the passion that you have for your subject in a format that m makes the most sense to you, even if that's not just a written paper. So I'm not gonna go into like huge detail with these. I just wanna be sure that you guys know that they're due on July 24th. There is an optional forum in module nine if you wanna share your, um, your project with the class, if you're super proud of it, if you think it's great, or if you just want feedback, you know? Um, and then also, so far, I've gotten a lot of questions in my email and text messages about the final project, but none in the ask final project questions here. So if you look under your start here tab, there is a forum that says ask your final project questions here and the reason that that is there is so everyone else can hear and get the same you know like some of you have asked me for different resources like do I have examples for something or um, would this particular thing work other people might like to hear that too um, so what I should do is go back and list those questions there so everyone can see them but if you have questions of course you can text me but it would also be cool if you post them there just so everyone can see Okay, this, I really don't feel like this was helpful to you at all. I was just trying to come from my heart because this, this class has been, it has been close to my heart. Especially, I feel like we have all been through so much together since the start of this class to now. And developing these skills and new mindsets and ideas that are, they're the most relevant that they've ever been in my lifetime of almost 40 years. Um, so yeah, so that was me being me. If you guys have questions, you know how to reach me. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing your discussions this week.